Hi, welcome to the channel, Budget Audio Review and Upgrades. And uh, today, as you can see, not much in front of me, just gonna have a little general chit chat, telling you how the channel's going, etc. And just, um, you know, a couple of little announcements, really, um, about things that, um, you know, people left comments about videos I've done, and now I've amended them sometimes. So, you know, if you think I've done something wrong, or whatever, obviously put that in the video, and I'm only going by my past experience. Um, but, yeah, obviously, sometimes you make mistakes or say things maybe you shouldn't have done. So there's a couple of examples here. Uh, the very first one is a video I literally just put up, the very last video was about uh, cleaning tape heads. And um, I don't know if he's a subscriber, but anyway, I had a comment from Gary Paul. Uh, on that video, I've took it down since, and I will re-put re it back up, slightly um, amended. Uh, I was uh, cleaning a video head with uh, a cotton bud. Now this is, you know, a lot of people say this is a no-no. Uh, because this cotton bud's going to get in there and it's all going to fall apart and clog up the head. But I've, you know, honestly, I've been doing this for years. You know, not not recently, obviously, because no one's got video recorders these days. But uh, you know, back in the past, I used to have um, one one playing and five recording. I won't go into it too much, but yeah, that's the kind of thing I was doing. I was trying to make you know videos look a little bit better than what they were. Had all the uh, all the equipment there. It was it was old equipment. It wasn't nothing digital. It was all the analog stuff. You know bringing up the brightness, bringing down the contrast, trying to saturation, sharpness, all that, just trying to make that, you know, the video I'm copying, so to speak, just look a little bit better when I'm recording it. You know, sometimes it paid off, sometimes it didn't. But anyway, you know, obviously, I was doing quite a few a day and um, I had to keep the machines clean, etc. And um, I know there's a couple of, couple of methods doing it, but I like to get in there everywhere because the, as the tape goes around, it, little particles fall off here and there, now and again, like depending on how old the tape is, etc. So I like to keep everything nice and clean. Uh, and I used to use a cotton bud. Now I've got used to how to use this cotton bud. Uh, obviously, if you you know if you catch the head, because you know the head is just up, it's, it's, it's inside the drum, just fractionally underneath it, and there's a gap there. And of course, as you spin it round, if you've got the cotton bud and you've got it, you're doing the wrong actions, or you're not used to how much pressure to put, you could theoretically start putting some of them fibres, some of them like ha little hairs or whatever off the cotton bud and get it clogged up. But it, it, it takes a little bit of doing, I must admit, but it can happen. So yeah, I mean, obviously I'll, I'm used to that. So putting a video up of me doing that and recommending maybe you doing that probably wasn't the right thing now, looking back at it. Like I say, Gary came in there quite quick with a comment. I had a quick think about it and I thought, oh yeah, yeah, maybe I should take that down. I don't want anyone ruining their video recorder, that's for certain. So there is other methods, I've tried the other methods and they work, but I just like getting into the bottom of the drum and everywhere, and the other method with a piece of paper, you can't always do that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to redo that video, so I'm going to address that, and uh, yeah, there's, there's one thing that maybe I got a bit wrong. And another one that maybe I got a bit wrong also, uh, you know, recently, was the, uh, the Arcam uh, AV300, where I did it off. And I'm showing you me inside with it on, touching things, etc. Obviously, I well, I kind of know what I'm doing. Let's put it that way, because I've had electric shocks. I mean, I don't think you're going to know any electrician that hasn't had an electric shock. That's guaranteed, you know what I mean? And I haven't had one electric shock over the years. I've had loads and loads and loads. Silly mistakes, you will do them, uh, but kind of got used to it again, you know what I mean? Run of the mill kind of thing. Uh, I haven't one had one recently, I must admit, but you know, one's coming probably. But... Um, yeah, nothing. I, mean, I wouldn't recommend if you did not know what you're doing to start prodding around your fingers in there with the item on. And also, I left that item on running, saying, you know, inadvertently saying that, you know, some people may, if you've got one of these, this is probably how you're using it. Obviously, not the way to use it with the, with the lid off, like small children about, animals, etc., etc. So, you know, only do them if you know exactly what you're doing and you're standing next to it to guard it as well. So, that's two things addressed, hopefully. So, I apologize for them, you know, obviously, I. Don't want anyone getting hurt or anything like that. But uh, yeah, just be careful, obviously, you know, whatever you're doing, if you're following any of my recommendations, do be a bit careful, you know, think about things, uh, give yourself plenty of space and, uh, you know, just be careful and have these things turned off as well, like you would me. Next, I want to talk about subs. Uh, yeah, thanks for all the new subscribers, getting those subscribers on a daily basis now, which is great, you know, helping the channel move up. And uh, you may notice that I haven't actually got how many subs I've got, and it's in the many thousands, believe it or not, but the, the views are not, you know, kind of like reflecting that. And the reason I've turned it off at the moment because it's because of that. Uh, I used to have an old channel before this doing old black and white films, etc., all these public domain films, and I bought up. I had quite a lot of followers on that, subscribers, etc., but they're disappearing one by one over the days, and the new subscribers coming into iFi and etc. 
is coming up. So once that kind of balances, and I think it's at the right stage to kind of reflect how many subs I really have that's watching the channel for what it is now, I shall put back, you know, how many, you know, how many subs I've got. But at the moment, it doesn't reflect that. You know, I'm getting a few hundred hits on videos. Yeah, I've got many, many thousand subs. It, you know, people are going to think, why is that? And that is the reason. Also, um, I, I mean, my, my repair skills, I would say about intermediate, medium, average, I would have said like you and me, the, I'm no complete expert. So, um, you know, you know, take that on board and what I'm doing as well. You know, I'm only here to try and help you like a complete novice. You know, maybe the channel's aimed at, for, you know, for your complete novice at repairing stuff. Hopefully I can show you uh, how to maybe repair your stuff, put new bulbs in. I mean, the channel will be quite wide and variant, I think, you know. I mean, even though it's got, I've got hi-fi, uh, kind of audio budget audio uh, I'm going to kind of venture out a bit anything I think slightly connected to it you may be interested that I come across I'm not you know, running out to try and find something unusual or something you know something to do with video or something for instance that's not really a great deal to do with iFi but if I think it's kind of interconnected may help someone a worthy video maybe me putting up something me put another video up and maybe catch another subscriber etc you know I'm probably going to put it up so bear with me it may not all be about the particular one subject so that's one thing there and a few people have asked me like saying they don't live too far away can I repair this can I have a look at that uh, I, I, I don't do it because there's a few reasons first of all I haven't really have not got the time I'm still doing a part-time job at the moment which I'm hoping to pack up very soon but um, I really haven't got the time and, and I've got things need doing in the house and I've also trying to do the channel I've got things repaired things coming in it's just it's just too much and not that it don't always go to plan I've had a few instances in the past doing favours and repairs for people and completely mucking it up you know what I mean it, it don't always work out then you're going to feel obliged for a mate maybe they kind of say oh, don't worry about it but for someone that's not a mate you're going to feel obliged to kind of get it repaired or buy them a new item so you know it's, it's just not feasible it's just silly really though so um yeah sorry i can't help anyone out you know i can do maybe give advice but that is about as far as it goes i do look at every single uh comment in the bottom it doesn't mean i'm going to respond i, I do respond to give a like etc but you know i try and respond to the ones i'll get time to respond to everything else but you know i, I appreciate them comments get some great get a few subscribers here give them some great tips for other people and myself so you know you know if you think you've got something to contribute that's fantastic because it won't just me to be looking at it obviously anyone else that wanders over the channel in an, in the years to come it probably give them some advice you never know like in five years time someone may be running out buying his cassette deck for instance and uh, need a little bit of advice and you've put your little comment at the bottom it may not have been read for four years and all of a sudden five years later it gets read gives that person a direction to go in and mends it or whatever so that's fantastic you know what i mean a, a great bit of uh, great bit of youtube stuff there you know obviously it's forums about and everything else but you know it's great you know what i mean it really is and kind of talk on that subject also yeah i mean i may repair something or i may bring in just you know for instance replacing the bulbs on a tune or something you know i mean a tuner that not many people's got probably like you know, one person in the world's got it so to speak um but yeah that may help someone eventually may get two or three views on it but if i think that you know it's not going to take me long to do why not put it on the channel because if it can help someone that's really great another thing you noticed i've been putting some adverts up i mean most YouTubers do these days, you know what I mean? Once you get your thousand subs and your 4,000 hours, people start putting adverts on, like, you know what I mean? Obviously to help the channel, to make a profit, to make a living, you know what I mean? There's quite a few channels out there doing that, you know what I mean? For instance, one I follow is Techmoan. You know, he, he blatantly tells you at the beginning, you know, this is what he's done it to make a living, got fed up again, the nine to five job. I mean, I'm, this is not a channel for me to make a living, that's for certain. But um, I've put the adverts on there and that's gonna help me over the year, it's going to take quite a while because you know, there are no fortunes, that's for certain. As the channel builds up, it's going to allow me to maybe buy one or two extra items that I wouldn't normally buy, which is great because that one or second, you know, one or two items I get in, I can do a little review, maybe repair or whatever it is I've got to do to it. So that's another couple of videos on the channel. And, and my, most of my items, most of these get sold back on again, like you with me. So that may bring in another item. So it's kind of like a little bit of a snowball effect. I don't make any profit anything I buy or sell really. Now and again, I may fluke a cheap buy which i can sell at a profit but um, i don't really like it that much you know what i mean to be honest with you i try to be as fair as possible and um yeah most of the stuff i actually lose on like here with me but it's an enjoyment i enjoy doing it it's an hobby and um you know hopefully bring some help to some other people making decisions and don't forget it's my personal you know my personal taste in my, my personal listening doesn't mean i'm 100 percent right or anything like that always best to go and have a look at some other youtubers some forums etc to so kind of build up a picture of how the item actually may sound before you run out and buy it and talking about that this channel is all about budget stuff 
Uh, I'm going to give a little description about myself now, what I used to do years ago. Uh, and, and how it comes I'm doing budget stuff here, not like high-end stuff like some channels. I mean, I, I follow some channels like Stereo Review X, uh, another great channel. And uh, I, I've got Dit and Works, mustn't forget Dit and Works, nice bloke there. Uh, Kevin, he's been around here. And uh, it's a great channel to look at if you're interested in loudspeakers, uh, particularly like uh, he deals in them, taking them apart, etc. Uh, another channel, Ha Fix It Hit. Uh, I think they say it, AH Fix Hit. Uh, that's another good little channel. It does all the old vintage receivers, etc. It's got a great little bulb test there where he goes through all the different bulbs you can put in your receiver one by one and he has them side by side so you can kind of uh, see how they would look if you want to do a bulb replacement in your receiver, tuner, etc. Okay, so yeah, there's many, many channels I look at. Uh, I won't list them all, be here forever like you with me. But um, yeah, just thought I'd mention that as well. Okay, I'm um, just going down a list here. I've got a list of things I must mention kind of thing and talk about as we go through. Now, how did I start in iFi? Um, like, uh, I think I started like a lot of people did. Not everyone jumps in the deep end. I mean, many, many years ago, uh, I remember my next door neighbour having a catalogue and I was, I was in my teens kind of thing. And I'll be looking around for a little bit of something, something to put me, uh, play me records on. I used to have one of them like, like Crosby things at the time. And they're okay, but then you want to have a pair of loud speakers, get it louder, hopefully make it sound better, etc. And I remember there, and I, I went out and bought myself an Amstrad system. And they've all got to start somewhere. This is here in the UK. And they obviously now, you know, it's, it's a pretty, very basic system indeed. You know, just about a bit better than the Crosby probably. But that's how I started. And went on to Goodman's, another UK make. Then obviously worked my way up. And, you know, I used to buy and sell the iPhone. I mean, I honestly can say I, um, some of the stuff I've had, I probably can't even remember I've had. You know, I'll get, I'll get a mate now and again mentioned I go around his house or something. He's got a bit of sake there that I used to have years ago. For instance, I went around a, a friend of mine and, uh, he, you know, he may have an amplifier or cassette deck or something like that. And uh, say, so, you remember I bought that off you? And I think, oh, I can't remember. I can't even remember having it, to be honest with you. But that's how quickly I used to turn around things. I really, really did. So, yeah. Yeah, I used to run out and buy all the old iFi magazines and that at the time used to be like, you know, iFi used to be video magazines, used to be what iFi, what video. Used to be like all different ones, you know, four or five different publications for each kind of subject and that used to get that, look at their reviews, go on with their reviews, like, you know, I mean, look at the specs and all that kind of stuff and uh, run out and try and, you know, sell something I've already got to try and make my system a little bit better than what it was. I mean, many years ago, like I say, I started off with this Amstrad stuff and worked my way up as I was going along JVC. I went through so many like the lower end makes before I started maybe moving up a little bit more to uh, maybe well known, you know, better known makes, so to speak. But uh, in that process, I used to, um, you know, back then I used to have my own little radio station. It used to be a pirate radio station. Uh, didn't go out far. It was about a 10 mile radius, but used to have some great fun with that two decks and mixer and all that. And uh, I used to put that out mainly on the weekend like for an hour or a couple of hours depending and that was great fun like you know what i mean i remember like you know bring back some memories like remember um tuning in over capital radio and stuff like that. i know you're not supposed to but i remember like capital radio used to be on and a few friends used to live local and uh i'll say and don't forget i'm on and they go oh, well i'm listening to capital or radio two or you know radio one should i say the chart show etc the top 40 used to be on and uh, you could chew my uh, transmitter and they used to come over the top and I'll, I'll see him the next day because we didn't have mobile phones and all that back then. And you see him the next day at school, etc., or wherever. And uh, they're turning and say, oh, I was listening to Fingy Bob yesterday. And all of a sudden you come over the top and stuff like that. So yeah, it used to be great fun, but uh, obviously I'm not recommending you do that these days, that's for certain, but that, that was way back then. Um, yeah, I used to be pretty much, I used to run out and pretty much get the first of everything, to be honest with you, back then. I mean, um, I remember like, you know, it was madness really. This is why the channel now, I've kind of like more budget stuff, all this second hand stuff. I think there's a lot, lot more value now to be had in buying stuff second hand. Even if you went out and bought a new amp, you know, say, say, a new amp second hand, you know, you went out and bought, I don't know, off the top of me, a Riga amp that may be four or five thousand pounds these days to buy brand new. You could probably go on eBay or something and shave a thousand pounds off of it straight away, being second hand. The bloke's only just turned it on and listened to a few records on it or something like that. So, you know, you know, there's money to be, you know, saved buying second hand, even if it's something new, so to speak, or, you know, especially when we go reel it back into this budget stuff now that I'm doing. You know, some of these things, if you went out and bought it brand new these days, some of these receivers, you may pay, a, you know, a thousand pounds. It's kind of that build quality back then. And you're going to pick up one of them for about a hundred quid. So as you can see, you know, it's quite a bit of value to be had and they still sound nice, still sound great. I mean, there's a little bit of debate about how long they're going to last maybe, you know what I mean? You're taking a little bit of a gamble there, but you're paying a tenth for the price. And, you know, if you know someone local, you can do a little few repairs yourself. Well, you know, there's some good stuff to be had, I think. 
where did I start? I mean, I, I had, like I say, I went through everything, seriously, all brand new. I paid everything brand new, went out and got it. Something else come out, and it's 10 minutes later. You, you're trying to trade that in. Like I said, you go to sell it second hand, you're losing money straight away just to keep up with the latest tech. You know what I mean? It was, it was it got silly, but I kind of done it, and I think we've all done it when we're in a, you know, being young and that. I've done it for absolutely ages. I mean, I was, as soon as the Teletext TV come out, and I'm just giving a few examples. I've written down here, Teletext come out, I bought that straight away. Then Fastext come out, so forget the Teletext, I've got to have Fastext. So, of course, gone and bought the Fastext, then Nikam TV come out. So forget, you know, the Teletext and the Fastext, I've got to have a Nikam telly now. So these were just rattling through, like, you know what I mean? It was silly, really. I remember buying my first VCR, the, literally the day it came out, I used to go to a local shop and buy bits and pieces off of them all the time, electrical. I was, I was quite well known in there, I was in there so often. Uh, you know what I mean? It was like that. And I remember buying a, a VCR. I'll never forget it. It was an Atachi VCR. This is this is what I call great service. This is like, you know what I mean? I don't think you're going to get that these days. Uh, well, you, you obviously you've got guarantees these days, but I was kind of saying, I was kind of happy with and told to exchange it. Let me just tell the story very, very quickly. I bought an Atachi VCR. This is the same time that I think Ferguson had their piano key one. Well, Atachi did a piano key one. It was a little bit cheaper. I think it was about £100 cheaper, but it was still about £599 at the time here in the UK. And it weighed an absolute ton. And uh, this was a local shop, and I, you know, I had no transport or nothing. I had to get my mum's little trolley. You know the trolley they go around with their shopping in. I had to march that through the park. Uh, where I was to go and pick up this item and put it in the trolley and, and bring it back home and it like rattling about and finally got it in, set it all up. And I'll never forget it. This is, you know, things you never forget. I had it in the corner here, just here in the corner, and the TV was just over there at the time of, you know, probably, I, I can't remember what it was, but probably a 32 inch or so, 28 inch uh, TV at the time. And I recorded Coronation Street. And um, my mum came in. A, an hour or so later after doing dinner, etc., and Coronation Street had finished and all that, she's missed it. And I said, here's Coronation Street, and I pressed the button, and there it was on the TV, and then she just could not believe it. She's going, you're mucking about, you're mucking, what are you doing, what are you doing, what are you up to? Couldn't, couldn't understand that this program was on a cassette tape. But anyway, that's just a little story there, it's obviously gonna to stick to me forever. But anyway, I had a little glitch with this um, Atachi. Every now and again, you get the like the, the tracking kind of go out there, little white lines at the bottom flickering about, like I say, I used to go down this shop regular, and I think I went down a few days later to go and buy something else, or whatever it was, or have a look around in there, etc. And he asked me how I'm getting on with this uh, VCR. And I said to him, it's all right. I said, but every now and again, this telling him what happens, these little lines appear. He said, well, that shouldn't be happening. You know I mean? It should be perfect. He said, if you're not happy with it, bring it back. And I, I, at the time, I, I wasn't too fussed. I said, well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm all right with it. But anyway, he convinced me. He said, look, I've got another one here bring it down and we'll give you another one. So I march it through the park in the trolley again, rattling down there, gives me another brand new touch, you bring it back home, same problem, like, you know what I mean? It's, you know, it's just the way it was, I don't know if it was the tapes I was using, just just the way it was really, like, and I was getting, it didn't really bother me, it was only now and again, and uh, went down there again and looking around, etc. mentioned it, he said, oh, no, 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 he said, Did you, I'll tell you what I do, he said, if you don't want it, we're gonna give you, you give you your money back, you know what I mean? You're a good customer, we, we want you to be happy. And uh, he convinced me. I don't really want to take it back. He convinced me, so I ended up taking it back. Uh, and a few weeks later, I missed it so much that I ended up buying the Ferguson one. It was an extra hundred pound era. So yeah, it was great customer service, but obviously, you know, I was a good customer to him, but you know, these days you go in the shops and they don't know who you are or anything, I don't think, you know what I mean? And I know you've got the guarantee, but that, that was just a little story that stuck in mind there, you know what I mean? And, and sadly that shop's disappeared, a little private shop that's disappeared many years ago. I was the first to have like things like a CD player, you know what I mean? I, that, 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 I had the Philips Vertical one, as soon as that came out, I was out there buying it. And another really very quick story, I had the CD player, and all we ought to do now is get some CDs for it, and that was as hard as you like. I had to travel into London, here in the UK, into uh, HMV in London, Oxford Street, and asked the bloke behind the counter, I want some CDs, whereabouts are these CDs? And he pointed to a little rack, a little cardboard rack at the end of the counter, and I think there was about six or eight titles to choose from. You yeah, know, that's how it was back then. It was so limited, it was untrue, and this is why you'd buy like, albums like Pink Floyd and stuff, and other, other Brick in the Wall and Die Straits and stuff like that. So albums maybe that you wouldn't maybe normally buy back then, he was kind of like forced into buying because there was nothing else to buy, you know what I mean? So then I have a great thing there, the uh, CD. That like I say, I was first to everything, you know what I mean? Mini disc player, first I walked into Dixon's, asked for a mini disc player, got that. And I remember once, you know, when the MP3 players come out, I went into Dixon's, the same store I bought that mini disc from, and said to him, have you got an MP3 player? Like, And he looked at me and said, what are they? You know what I mean? It was, you know, that's how things suddenly changed, like... First was surround sound. I had a massive system here, surround sound. Normal Dolby, Dolby Pro Logic, Pro Logic, 
where that was just a, a left and right, a centre and a mono rear, you know, some fast Top Gun. How many times did I watch that film? The lift going across, panning left to right or right to left, whatever it was. The planes flying over it, etc. You know, watched that so many times and the music in there, building up the old subwoofer and all that. So yeah, plenty, plenty of stuff I've had, you know what I mean, over the years. Game consoles, computers, all that. I've been first in the queue to get every single one of them. A couple of stories. Um, I remember buying me first uh, well, a Super Nintendo, for instance, running out getting a Super Nintendo Japanese import, you know, paying an absolute fortune for it. And never forget paying £150 for Mario Kart because it came with a controller, an extra controller. So that was a mere £150 on import. Um, for instance, 3DO, you know, consoles you may not have heard of here, but PlayStation 1, straight up London buying that, the Japanese import. £850, yeah that's right, £850 for the console and £150 for Ridge Racer. So there you go, £1,000 for me to play Ridge Racer. But what a great game, but soon got bored and I had to sell that on and I must have sold that on PlayStation 1, backwards and forwards, different ones, many, 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 many times, it's weird. But anyway, just give you an instance there, uh, like I said, my own radio station, uh, when DVDs come out, you know, I was first to buy a DVD player, then a DVD recorder, £1,000 here in the UK for a DVD recorder, then just getting one blank DV, DVD, that was £10 when they first come out, pretty much like the videotape when they first come out. I remember getting my first video cassette recorder and paying £10 for a blank tape, you know, how things change. But, you know, it's like it with any technology, but, uh, you know, this is why this channel now, like I say, is coming down to budget stuff, you can go and... All this stuff here I mentioned here, you can buy for a few pounds now these days, but most of it, like, you know what I mean? Go out and buy this stuff. Uh, apart from, I mean, there's a few things there that I did buy. I looked up on eBay, um, like the mini disc player. I can't remember, I think it's MZ1 or something, the um, Sony one. Uh, was it some sort of Sony one, the little black square one? Uh, that, that's about £500 to buy now. Some of these are quite rare items. I mean, you used to have Video 8 recorders and stuff like that by um, Sony uh, Video 8, you go and try and buy these little Video 8 recorders now, you know, it's, it, they're very expensive, etc. I mean, I, I um, DAT recorders, I had uh, digital compact cassette, I mean, all these are quite expensive now, second hand even, you know, some of them are their value, but most of this stuff is a lot cheaper to buy now, you know, second hand, so like I say, this is what the channel's all about. So hopefully that's kind of give you, I think I've gone through everything now, uh, you know, where the channel's going, a little bit about me in the background, there's so much, I've, I've done so many things, it will take up, hours and hours to tell you all about it, it would do really, but kind of gives you a background, always tinkering around with stuff back then, and even now, uh, like I say, I really started off in the, you know, I started off with you know, a bit of i find that, but I was really back then a video man, you know what I mean, I used to do a lot of taping, uh, tape to tape, etc, a lot of try tuning and all that kind of stuff, um, so that, that's uh, pretty much a, a little bit more about me, and a little bit more about the channel, so hopefully, you know, you've enjoyed me rattling on now, and I'll, I'll continue now by plonking up a few more new videos. Until then, I'll say thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.